The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you huskies! Gold! Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battle through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Ann Gordon hesitated for a moment before entering the Klondike Palace, a gaudy cafe in Dawson City. It looked bleak and ugly in the daylight, and as she opened the door, she could smell the distasteful odor of spilled beer and stale tobacco smoke. She took a deep breath and resolutely entered. The place was empty except for an old man who was sweeping the floor that was littered with tobacco, ashes, and broken glasses. He stopped his work and looked at her curiously. Good morning. Well, howdy, miss. Uh, you the owner of the Klondike Palace? <laughs> Me the owner? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Heck no, miss. I'm just a sweeper-upper. Oh. Well, who is the owner? Uh, Chris James. Is, um... Mr. James here? Yep. Uh, he's back there in his office. You want to see him about something? Yes. I I'm looking for a job. A job? You sure you're in the right place, ma'am? Well, they do have girls working here, don't they? Yep, they do, but... You don't seem oh, to be... Oh, you mean you, you think Mr. James wouldn't hire me? No, no, I didn't mean that. It, it's just that... Well, uh... You're pretty young, ain't you? Well, I'm 19. You ever been in here after dark? No. No, I never have. Well, ain't exactly like a prayer meeting. I, I didn't suppose it would be. But, oh, I must have a job. I see. Well, go straight back through that door and turn to the right. Chris James' office is there. Thanks. A nice-looking girl like you ought to find yourself a good husband instead of working. Are, um, are you Mr. James? Sure, sure. Well, come on in. I won't fight you. Um, I'm Ann Gordon. Yeah? Uh, I've been living alone with my father. He was a prospector. What's that got to do with me? Why, nothing, but... Uh, well, you see, he died and, and I've been left alone. We didn't have much money. Not enough for me to get back to the States, I mean. Well, if you're looking for a handout, this ain't the place for it. I just started this business, and I'm still in the hole. I'm not asking for money. Well, listen, sister, get to the point. What are you asking for? I want a job. A, a job? You? Oh, I know I don't look very nice. These clothes, they're, they're old and shabby. <laughs> well, <laughs> to get a job here, you're not supposed to look nice. <laughs> You ever worked any place before? No, I've always lived with my father. <laughs> Can you dance or sing? Well, I, I sing a little, but I've never had any lessons, if that's what you mean. Ah, lessons ain't necessary. All you got to do is carry a tune. Yeah, you might do. Dress in some glad rags, a little makeup. You might not be too bad. I'm I'm afraid I haven't any fancy clothes. Well, you got some here that'll fit you. That's not what I'm worrying about. Oh, I'll make a good waitress. I'll work hard. We don't use waitresses, kid. Your job will be to entertain the boys. We got men waiters. Entertain? Sure, sure. Sit with them at the table, sing for them, listen to their trouble. Oh, you learn. I, I didn't know. Maybe I'd better try to get work somewhere else. There's no place else you can get work that I know of. Maybe you could hire out as somebody's housekeeper, but uh, this is much easier and pleasanter. The more I think about it, the more I think you do right well. <laughs> You'd be sort of a novelty. <laughs> uh, are there any other women in the place? Sure, we got two more. Dottie LaRue is just about your size. She'll give you some clothes. Well, I'll have to find a place to live in in town. Room and board goes with a job. Got a couple of cabins back here. You can stay with Dottie. She's living alone in hers. You mean you give us free board and room and... And a salary, too? $25 a week, plus commissions on refreshments. Refreshments? Whatever the men buy for you while you're sitting at their table. Oh. Daddy will tell you about it. 
Now, if you want the job, go on back and see her. She's in the second cabin back. I could save all my salary. I'd soon have enough fare to leave the country. Well, sure, sure you would. Maybe you'll learn to like it here. Maybe you'll find out you don't want to leave at all. I'll take the job, Mr. James. Fine, fine. <laughs> now that we're friends, you can start calling me Chris, huh? Um, I guess I'd better go back and see Miss LaRue. I'm Ann Gordon. Mr. James sent me to see you. You're, you're Miss LaRue, aren't you? Sure, I'm Dottie LaRue. Come on in before I freeze to death. Oh, don't get scared. I always look like a sheepdog in the morning. Throw them clothes on the floor and sit down. I was so dog tired last night, it's a wonder I didn't sleep in them. <laughs> I'll just put them on the bed. Why did Chris send you here? He gave me a job. He said you could explain what I'd be expected to do. It's a job like yours, I guess. Gee, kid, you ain't that hard up, are you? I haven't any money. I want to get enough to get back to the States. My father died and, well, we were poor. Yeah, that's the old story. Well, this job ain't easy, but it's better than starving to death. You ever worked before? Just housework, but I'm strong. Well, that's good. Because when things get too rough, there's nothing like a good left hook to the jaw. What? I think Chris is out of his mind letting a nice kid like you work here. Oh, I'm sure I could do it. Oh, you could do it all right. But it's liable to take some of that stardust out of your eyes. You're the kind that ought to get a good young husband to take <laughs> care of you. That's not too easy either. Come to think of it, this might be the place to find one. Every prospector in the Klondike drifts into the Klondike Palace sooner or later. Uh, just what do I have to do? Well, all you have to do is dance with people, do a little singing. Mostly, you just sit and listen to them talk oh. about themselves and let them buy you drinks. Chris pays a commission on those. But I don't drink. You don't have to. Chris never lets Charlie put anything strong in the drinks they serve us. It's just water with a little tea to color it. Oh. But that ain't known to the one who's buying it. You have to get used to hearing words you probably won't even know the meaning of. And once in a while, they'll make a grab at you. Oh. If you can't fight them off alone, just yell for me or Charlie. Most of the men are pretty decent, though, believe it or not. I'm... I'm afraid I won't be able to do it. Well, the Klondike Palace ain't the place for a prairie flower, but you can make money. Board and room is expensive up here, and you get that free. Your salary and commissions are clear. I haven't any money. No. Why don't you try it, kid? If it's too rough, you can always leave. I'll watch out for you till you learn the ropes. Oh, you're very kind. I guess I haven't any choice. I guess the thing I should tell you to do is not to take the job. But I kind of want you to, for my sake, to tell the truth. You're like a breath of fresh air. And I ain't had any fresh air for a long, long time. During the early hours of the evening, Anne managed her new job well. But later, the noise and excitement mounted, and she found herself separated from Dotty at a table with a big man who had appointed himself her protector. <laughs> yeah, now, don't you worry, little girl. You just stick with Butch. And if anyone tries to hurt you, I'll cut out his heart. <laughs> here, waiter. Waiter. Yeah? Repeat this order here. Two of the same. Sure. You see, you remind me of my sister. Thank you, Mr. Butch. Four other men told me that tonight. They did? Other lying coyotes. They were just telling you that to put you off your guard. Show me which one said it, and I'll smash their heads in with this chair. Hello there, girlie. You're new here, ain't you? Can't remember seeing you before. You get away from this table. Uh, who do you think you're talking to? I can talk to her if I want to. Now, listen, girlie. I want you. Oh, will you? Oh, stop it, please. You're a Look out. Here comes the county. All right, you Break it up. I'll knock his head off. Get back, Butch. Hey, you let me alone. Butch. 
You've had too much to drink. Go on home. You got no right to tell me what to do. I said get out of here. Now move. Uh, if you wasn't a place. Get going. I... Yeah, I was going home. Hey, what's going on here? That crazy butch started a fight. Sergeant Preston stopped it. You'd better watch these men a little closer, Chris. We can take care of this place without any outside help. Oh? You don't seem to be doing a very good job of it. Thanks for stopping them, Sergeant. You go on over and tend to your business, Ann. The boys want you to sing for them. Please, Mr. James. I'm so nervous. Would you mind if I went to my cabin? Why, of course he wouldn't mind. Go get your coat. Hey, look, I don't see that there's any business of the law. Let me I... decide just what the business of the law is. Get your coat, miss. I'll see that you get back to your cabin safely. I'll be back in a moment. Thank you, Sergeant. As Sergeant Preston and Ann left the cafe, King, the sergeant's big lead dog, rose to his feet from the shadows outside the door where he had been waiting. <laughs> Ann gave a frightened jump. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's my dog, King. Oh. Don't be frightened. He won't hurt you. He startled me. I didn't see him lying there. The Klondike Palace is so smoky and crowded, the King doesn't like to go in it. I let him wait outside for me. I don't blame him for not liking it. Horrible. You've just started to work there, haven't you? Yes. I had no idea just what I was getting into. How did a girl like you ever get mixed up with Chris James? I never saw him before today. I had to have a job. You see, I, I haven't any money. and I went in to get a job as a waitress. I see. Is, is Chris James bad? He has a very bad record. We checked up on him. He just bought this place and went into debt heavily to get us, and we're wondering why. He isn't the type to stay anywhere very long, and it'll be a long time before he'll have this place free and clear. Well, I don't like him, and I don't like this job. If I could just find something else to do, I'd... Oh, but it's no use. Uh, here's the cabin, Sergeant. Thank you for bringing me back here. Miss Ann, uh... uh... I'm afraid I don't know your last name. It's Gordon. Ann Gordon. I was so excited over that fight, I I forgot to introduce myself. Do you intend to go on working here? Well, I'm afraid I haven't any choice. I've just had an idea. I don't know if it would work. An idea? If we had someone on the inside working with Chris, it would be easy to keep a check on him. You mean I could help the mounted police? Would you be willing to do it? Oh, why, yes. But I don't see how I could help. It won't be a pleasant job, or an easy one. You'll have to stay here and pretend to like it until you get the confidence of Chris and can find out just what he's planning. Let's go into the cabin and talk. It's cold out here. All right. (laughs) Come on in, King. Sit down, Sergeant. Thank you. (laughs) Down, King. Here beside me, boy. You know... I think King is the most beautiful dog I've ever seen. I want him to understand that we're working together. I may have to leave him with you sometime. Just what is it you want me to do, Sergeant? I'll have to tell you what we know about Chris James first. He tried to file a claim on a rich gold strike down in Selkirk. The man who discovered the gold disappeared. But it seems they had a partner who filed on the claim before Chris tried to do it. Do you think Chris James was responsible for the man's disappearance? We were never able to prove it. Chris left Selkirk and turned up here under a different name. His real name isn't Chris James. Uh Does he know that you're watching him? No, he doesn't know that we know who he is. His plan almost succeeded down there, so we think he may try it again. That's where you can help us. Oh, I see. If you can find out beforehand what he's planning to do and let me know, you may help to save someone's life. You can count on me, Sergeant. Thank you, Miss Gordon. Of course. This will mean I may may not get back to the States if I lose my job. Oh, don't worry about that. We'll see that you do get back. How do you know that you can trust me, Sergeant? Just seeing me this once, I... Why, just looking at you, Miss Gordon, you're obviously not the type of girl who'd like a job like the one in the Klondike Palace. I know I can trust you. You can. I'll be coming into the cafe regularly. If there's anything I should know, you can tell me there. Oh, uh... It won't do to let Chris know we're too friendly. I understand. I hope we can get this man before he does any more harm. With your help, I'm sure we can. Two weeks had passed, but though Anne watched carefully, there was nothing to report to Sergeant Preston. She and Dottie were dressing for the evening before going to the cafe. Dottie smiled as she tossed a bright green dress to Anne. You better wear this tonight, honey. 
It'll do things for your eyes and hair. Oh, but Dolly, this is the best dress you have. Don't make much difference what I hang on this frame of mine. I still look like something to scare children with. Go ahead, wear it. Oh, but if I tore it or hurt it in any I way... don't want you to dress up for our regular customers. Filthy old rum pot. But I notice you've been seeing quite a bit of that young oh. Tom Summers lately. Well, Tom's been in two or three times. Gosh, kid, after spending two weeks on a job at the Klondike Palace, you can still blush. Oh. I can't even remember when I could do that. Well, I'm not blushing. I, <laughs> well, it ain't a reflection from that green dress. <laughs> Be happy about it. Don't deny it. Oh, I do like Tom. He's not like the others. Of course he ain't. Didn't I tell you maybe if you stuck around here a while, it might pay off? Oh, I'm not going to marry him. I mean, well, he hasn't asked me. He hasn't any money. He's just prospecting. Well, maybe one of these days he'll hit the jackpot. If he does, I bet he takes you out of this hole so fast it'll make your head spin. Go on now. Get into that green dress and get out there and wait for him. It was early, and the usual crowd had not yet assembled at the Klondike Palace. Anne stood alone near the back of the room, dreading the usual task before her. But her eyes lighted up as young Tom Summers suddenly burst in the door. Anne! Anne! I've got wonderful news. Tom, what is it? I hit it, Anne. I made a strike. Oh! Look here. i got a sample in my pocket. This is it. I came straight here to tell you. Oh, Tom, it's wonderful. When did it happen? Just a little while ago. The claim office is closed, so I haven't had time to file my claim yet. But I'll be camping right on the front door oh. tomorrow morning. Well, what's all the excitement about? I hear something about a gold strike. Oh, you sure did, Chris. I hit it. This is rich pay dirt. Here, look. Yeah, you're quite right, son. But if I was you, I wouldn't shout quite so loud about it till you filed your claim. He's right, Tom. You shouldn't have told anybody. Oh, I, I didn't think anybody heard me. I, I guess I was so excited I didn't think... Anyway, the papers are all ready to file. And nobody's going to beat me to the claim office tomorrow. Especially when they don't know where the strike was made. Got your papers on you? Oh, you bet I have. Well, maybe I better put them in the safe for you. If you're planning on celebrating. Well, I, I'm not planning to celebrate that much. But I... I would like to have a bottle of champagne with Miss Gordon here. If you let me charge it, Chris. Oh, sure, sure I will. <laughs> you're going to be a rich man, Tom. I won't discourage a future customer. Why don't you go back in that booth near the back room where you can talk about your gold strike without letting everybody hear you, huh? That's a good idea. Come on, Miss Gordon. I'll burst if I can't tell somebody all about it. <laughs> I'll bring the champagne over myself. Thanks, Chris. Tom, you shouldn't have told Chris about this. Well, he heard me telling you. Now, don't worry about it. He won't tell anybody. Anyway, I can take care of myself. But I don't trust him. Oh, forget it. There's a, a little subject I want to talk to you about that's just as important as the gold strike. I'm glad we'll be sitting when nobody can butt in. Almost an hour had passed while Anne and Tom were deep in conversation about their future. They were startled when Chris suddenly appeared at the entrance of the booth. Sorry, Anne, but it's time for your song. Oh, gee, Chris. Can't you excuse her this once? This is something special. Ah, she won't be very long. I brought you a drink. You and I can celebrate for a few minutes as she gets back, can't we? Why, sure. I guess so. I'll be back as soon as I can. After all, this is my job. <laughs> Here's your drink, Tom. Let's hope your gold strike brings in a million. Thanks, Chris. Here's to you. <laughs> nice going, Ann. Give us another. Yeah, yeah. don't stop. Sing Annie Laurie again. Let's have an hour. Laurie, no more. Oh, come on. Yeah. No, stop. Never mind, kid. You go on back to Tom. I'll handle it. Oh, one. thanks, Dottie. Never mind, boys. Ann will be back. Tom, what, what happened to him, Chris? <laughs> he's all right, Ann. Guess that drink I gave him was a little too strong for him. Ah, he just went to sleep. The drink you gave him? Don't worry about him. Carry him into my office and put him on the couch. He'll sleep it off in a little while. But he was all right when I left. Yeah, I thought so, too. But you never can tell. Now you go on back and entertain the boys. I'll call you when he wakes up. Come on, Tom. Now, throw you over my shoulder. I think I'll go back with you. I told you to go back to your job. I'll be back in a minute to see that you're doing it. 
Why, Anne, honey, what's the matter? Oh, Dottie. You're white as a sheet. What's the matter? Tom, Chris gave him something to drink and... Oh, he... Tom's all right. He's having a little sleep for himself. Guess he ain't used to drinking. Oh, is that all? But <laughs> never mind, dearie. He'll be all right in an hour or so. You better go out and put on a little of my rouge. You look as if you've seen a flock of ghosts. Oh, there, Sergeant Press. Well, you stay away from him. Your job is with the customers. I'll talk to him. You better go out like Dottie says and try to make your face look human again. But I... Oh, I'll be back in a few minutes. Poor kid. She's sure out of place in the Klondike Palace. Yeah. I think we better find another job for her. Or maybe send her back to the States. Gee, Chris, that'd be swell if you do that. Well, we ain't got time to talk about her. You get back to work. I'm going over and try to get rid of that Monty. He's bad for business. It was over an hour later that Sergeant Preston entered the office at the police barracks and joined Corporal Sanders beside the big stove. King was at the Monty's side. It's getting a lot colder. Temperature's dropping fast. Well, I'm glad I'm off duty tonight. <laughs> What's the matter, King? Cold boy? What's hanging on his neck? Well, that's something you put on his collar? Come here, King. That's a piece of paper attached to his collar. Just a second, boy. His Easy. fur is so thick it was hidden, I, I just happened to see it when he looked up at you. It's a note. A note from Ann Gordon. <laughs> is that dog of yours playing Cupid for you this day, Sergeant? This is serious, Corporal. I didn't have a chance to talk to Ann tonight. I left King out in front of the palace, and Ann must have sneaked out and put this note on his collar. What does it say? It says, go to Chris James' office. Tom Summers is in trouble. I'd better get back there. Want me to go with you, Sergeant? No, it won't be necessary, thanks. I'm sure King and I can handle it. Come along, King. <laughs> Ann Gordon met Sergeant Preston as he returned to the Klondike Palace and told him what had happened as they hurried toward the office of Chris James at the back of the cafe. Chris left the bar and went back to his office just as soon as you left the cafe. I didn't dare go back there alone. We'll find out whether we drugged Tom or not. I'm glad you got word to me. Chris wouldn't let me talk to you. Huh? I sneaked around the front and found King where you always leave him. I was sure you'd see the note, but I thought you'd see it sooner. It was hidden in his fur. He kept whining and barking at me this evening, but I didn't know what was wrong until I got back to barracks. Here's the office, Sergeant. <laughs> Door's locked. Open this door, Chris. He's not in there. Stand over to one side, Ann. I'm going to break this lock. Back, King. There's no one in here. Not even Tom. Chris said he was going to put him on this cot. He was here. The cot's messed up. Oh, there's a door leading outside. I'll see if it's locked. This back door is open. Look. Tracks leading away from it. One man's tracks. You think Tom woke up and left by himself? Those tracks are clear in the moonlight. They were made by a very heavy man. Tom is slim. Chris is big. Look how deep those tracks are. Man even heavier than Chris made them. Or, or else... Or else what, Sergeant? They could have been made by Chris, carrying something heavy. He's taken Tom away. Oh, Sergeant. Go back to your cabin, Anne. I'm going to leave King with you and follow these tracks. I'll be able to see them in the moonlight. But you'd better take King. You may need him. You may need him more than I do. Take him to your cabin and stay there till I get back. The big gray dog, King, lay in the corner of Anne's cabin, almost invisible in the shadows. A low growl rumbled in his throat, and he rose as he heard heavy footsteps approaching the cabin. But he obeyed Anne when she spoke to him softly. Sit down, King. Lie there in the shadows and be quiet. Quiet, King. Who is it? Chris. I've been looking for you, Anne. Why'd you leave the cafe? Why, I was tired. Shut the door. I, uh, I thought maybe you'd like to take a little trip. A trip? Yeah. Couldn't give you enough money to send you back to the States. That is, if you'll start tomorrow. But why? Is it because... Because of what? Why, uh, I don't know. You were going to say because of Tom, weren't you? What have you done with him? Where is he? He was drunk. He left my office by the back door. That's not true. You put something into his drink. I know you did. Oh, and that's why you wanted to get to that Monty. Well, there's more than one way to quiet that wagon tongue of yours, and I'll give you a little sample of it right now. No, no, don't, Chris. King! King! No, no! No! no. Like a 
flash of lightning, the big dog rose from the shadows and hurled himself at Chris. Chris tried to fight him off, but the weight of King was too much for him, and he sprawled on the floor of the cabin and lay there terror-stricken as the great dog stood over him, his fangs bared. Hold him there, King. Got him, fellow. Hold him. And hold him off. He might kill me. That dog is going to watch you until Sergeant Preston gets here. Sergeant Preston? No. What? What's going on in here? Daddy. Daddy, this dog attacked me. Get your gun and shoot him. Hurry. Sure, it's right here, my dear. No, Daddy, don't. That's King. Daddy. Sergeant Preston's dog. Chris was trying to choke me. Why? No, no, she's lying. Daddy, shoot this dog. If you'll do it, I promise you'll have a fortune. We'll be able to leave the Yukon. You'll be rich. Shoot this dog so I can get up there. Wait. Daddy, please no. believe me. Chris drugged Tom and took him away. Tom struck gold today, and Chris is trying to get his claim. Tom struck gold, and Chris Daddy, is... Daddy will be rich. You'll never have to work again the rest of your life. It's what you always wanted. I'll use this gun all no. right, and it's pointing straight at you, Chris. No, you yellow coward. No. In case that dog gets tired of watching you, I'll be the second line of defense. No. What do you want to do with the man? Oh, thank you, Daddy. Sergeant Preston is coming back here. We'll wait for him. He's trying to find out what happened to Tom. Well, then, all we have to do is sit and watch this low-down thief squirm. No, Daddy, no. I don't think this gun is even necessary. That dog seems to be doing a fine job of holding him down. I'd offer you some tea while we're waiting, Chris, but I haven't any arsenic to put in it. Why, are you... Let's see who that is, Ann. Sergeant Preston. Are you all right, Ann? Oh, there's Chris. Oh, I'm so glad you got here. Where's Tom? He's in his cabin, and he's all right. King is holding Chris. He tried to kill me. I was afraid of something like that. All right, King, old boy. Good work. Back, fella. Let him up. Get up, Chris. Look, I, I wasn't trying to kill her. This dog jumped at me for no reason at all. Sergeant, what about Tom? I found him where Chris left him, lying in the snow beside his own cabin. He'd been drugged, and he would have frozen to death in a couple of hours without waking up. Why, that... I'd better put this gun away before I lose my temper. Look, I don't know anything about it. Tom had too much to drink, and he walked home by himself. That's the way you wanted it to look, isn't it? Hand over those papers you took from Tom's pocket, showing the location to his claim. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. All right, I'll search you. Stand still. Ah, here they are. And they have Tom's name on them. You were a big help, Ann. Boy, that little double cross. That'll do, Chris. I still got this gun and my temper's rising. You'd better put that gun away, Dottie. King and I can handle him. Oh, you were wonderful, Dottie. Not to listen to Chris. I was afraid for a minute that you'd be tempted to shoot King. No, honey. You see, you're the one I want to see get out of this place. You and Tom. And say, maybe after you're married, you'll let me come over to see you once in a while. You know, when I need a breath of fresh air. You'll always be the best friend in the world. Thanks, Dottie. You don't have to thank me for helping you. That dog had everything under control when I got here. King was what saved me. Thank you, old fellow. Yes, King. It looks as if this case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. If it's a case of murder you'd like, uh, to listen to, that is, be sure to latch on to the Murder and Mr. Malone Show. Here's a Saturday night thriller primed to bring you minute after minute of exciting mystery and adventure. The hero of the program is John J. Malone, a famous Chicago criminal lawyer who makes only one condition before accepting a case. It must be tough to crack. And once you hear some of the cases Malone tackles, you'll agree it's uncanny how he solves them. The most minute clue doesn't escape the shrewd eyes of this smart detective who believes that given enough rope, any criminal will eventually hang himself. As Malone says, the brainiest criminal will betray himself in some tiny act left undone, some stray piece of evidence left behind at the scene of the crime, or oftentimes through overconfidence when a criminal thinks he has the police completely baffled. Don't miss murder and...